Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And our guest, linebacker Logan Wilson of the Cincinnati Bengals. He'll talk about his season to this point in time, the good wins and the tough defeats, and how he handles each and every one of them. We'll talk about uh, his life as a high school football player, as a college football player, and now a young man playing in the National Football League with a fiance. Wedding coming up in July. Good for Logan Wilson. I think you're going to enjoy this. And also, don't forget to take advantage of the sweepstakes that First Star Logistics is providing. Unbelievable prize opportunities. Links and information needed are in the description below. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics and very special guest today, Bengals linebacker Logan Wilson. And first of all, of course, all Bengal fans know you as a Cincinnati Bengal, but let's go into the Wayback Machine. Natrona County High School. You were a safety, wide receiver, place kicker, punter, and you were first team all state in every position, weren't you? I mean, you're like Jim Thorpe. You did everything. Yeah, I think my junior year, I was all state at all four positions. All four in one year at the same year. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And then your senior year, you guys go 12 and 0, you win the state title. And what was that like? Uh, I mean, they could have asked for a better finish to cap off um, my career at Natrona County. Um, I was blessed to be around a very good group of guys um, that we kind of grew up together. Um, you know, we started going to, we called it summer, summer weightlifting um, in the summer. And it was like the summer of going into sixth grade. We had a pretty big group of us um, that just started lifting weights together. Um, and then we just went to school together. And as we progressed, we just became closer and closer. And um, that bond paid, paid off well for us. We ended up, uh, we called it like a triple crown. Um, our senior year, we won state football, state basketball, and state track. Wow. So, Man. With, the, yeah, with that senior, senior class. So what position did you play in basketball? Uh, like probably the four, like power forward. I wasn't a very good basketball player, truthfully. I was just good at defense. I understood what my responsibility was. And, um, you know, whatever team we were playing, whoever their best player was, that was my duty was to stop him as best I could. So That's valuable. That's yep. if not a defensive stopper. That's valuable, man. What about track and field? What events? Uh, I was a hurdler. Um, really? You know, I ran the 110 hurdles, the 300 hurdles, and wow. then I, my senior year, I was on the 4x1 and 4x4 relays. 300 hurdles, that's a dog gut race there, man. That's that's tough. That's a, that's a <laughs> tough challenge. Man. Yeah, that race, I mean, you can have speed in that race, but it's about your gut and your will to just beat the guy next to you. Because There's no, no doubt. Jeez. Yeah. All right, so you go to Wyoming, and you red redshirt your freshman year, and obviously you probably got on a, a strength and conditioning program, and um, you know, probably eating pretty good there on college campus and started getting bigger. You, you, were you recruited to play linebacker in Wyoming or how did that, how did that work out? How did that pan out? So I was technically recruited to play safety. Um, right. but I think that coach bull knew all along he was going to move me to, to linebacker. Um, it was just a matter of time. Um, you know, when I got there that first, uh, fall camp, I was taking reps at safety. Um, but I was also a freshman and when I, when we got to like the season portion of it, after I knew I was red shirting, that was before you could, you know, the new red shirt rules are different now, but, right. um, back then I knew I was red shirting. And so when I was on the scout team all year, I was playing scout team linebacker for, you know, whatever team we were playing that week. Um, and so then I started to maybe get an idea this could happen in the following, um, winter when we came back from Christmas break, he brought me into his office and, um, approached me about making the move to linebacker and you know i was a little skeptical at first because i i just never had played linebacker before i've been like a, a defensive back wide receiver kicker punter basically my whole life right um and so it, it took some adjusting for sure but um you know the reason i went to wyoming was because i believed in coach bull and what he was building at wyoming and um you know I, i'm a team first guy too so whatever he thought was best for our team is what i was willing to do Man, it worked out. You're, uh, you were um, Mountain West Freshman of the Year, your red shirt freshman season. 
at linebacker and then you're all conference and make all American mention as well. I mean, you had a great career at Wyoming. How, how much did playing safety at the high school level and seeing defense uh, from that perspective help you when you moved up a level closer to the line of scrimmage at the linebacker position? How much did that help your overall understanding of what was going on in the field? Yeah, I mean, in in high school, we don't run very complex defenses, right. um, like obviously in college and the NFL. But, you know, I think from like the, the hips aspect of it and being able to read a quarterback's eyes, understanding when to break, um, just – and then just having the ball skills of like when I was, I've been on playing on offense, like a wide receiver um, my whole life. So having the ball skills of that, um, it all, it all plays a role in um, to where I'm at now. So let's uh, let's bring you up to where you're at now. 65th pick of the draft to 2020 draft out of Wyoming is the linebacker, Logan Wilson, six, two, 240 kind of size. Is that, is that about it? You were about 240 right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Pretty good size. Uh, 70 tackles right now, 10th in the NFL, averaging eight and three quarters tackles a game, just about almost nine tackles a game, four interceptions, tied for second in the league. No other linebacker in the NFL has more than two. How do you feel about your start to the season? Um, You know, I feel pretty good for the most part. Um, You know, I think there's always room for improvement. Um. And that's kind of my mentality has been my whole whole career. I think that's part of the reason why I'm here is because um, just never never settling, um, always thinking that you can improve and get better at certain things within um, you know each each given game. Um, you're never going to play a perfect game. It's just it's something you always strive for, but you're never going to play it. Um, and you know I think for the most part um, I play pretty well. Um, but the most important piece is we're we're five and three right now and. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing that I care about. So against Pittsburgh, you had a, an unbelievable play where you and Sam Hubbard kind of switch positions. Sam goes to inside back or linebacker and, and you're a rush guy and you rush up the field. Sam gets involved in a little pressure package twist with defensive tackles and he deflects Ben's pass. And you, you retrace and make this diving interception against Ben Roethlisberger, one of the two picks that you had in that football game. That was just an unbelievable hustle play. Uh, wh- what were you thinking? What was going through your mind when that whole thing kind of unfolded? You know, that was just a blitz we had dialed up um, for that specific game, and um, Sam made a great play on the ball to get it to get Ben not to be able to throw a clean pass. And um, you know, I think I just felt that I wasn't going to get home to the quarterback, so it was time to turn and run. And that's kind of something I prided myself on. And because Sam tipped it, I was able to make a play on the ball, the right place at the right time. So let's fast forward to this uh, this last football game, and I know it's it's not a uh, not a pleasant thing to talk about. It's a it's a, a game that you I know you guys felt could have won a better football team didn't win that football game in a lot of people's estimation, including yours and mine, I'm sure, mm-hmm. um, as well as a lot of people. As that game unfolded, um, it's it looked to me like you guys did a, pr- a real good job of uh, muddying up the middle of the football field with some of your looks and your packages and everything. And, and just, they just kept going to the perimeter and, and, uh, and having some success. I, is, is that an oversimplification? I mean, I think that they, I mean, you saw, uh, they, they got a lot of screens on us. Um, we didn't tackle very well that game. That was, that's the biggest thing. Uh, my biggest takeaway was um, there's a lot of things that we did that we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. And in this league, you can't do that. Um, over and over and expect to win. So, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to learn from it. Um, and truthfully, it's Tuesday, so we're already on to Cleveland. You know, it's a short-term memory in this game, and um, that's our biggest thing moving forward. Because honestly, I thought that uh, prior to the Jets game, that was probably one of your biggest team strengths was tackling. I thought you guys had tackled really well the entire season and have had one instance where it stubbed your toe. But overall... Uh, it, has the tackling been more than satisfactory in everybody's opinion? Yeah, I think that's why we're disappointed. Obviously, we didn't tackle very well. That was probably our worst tackling game of the season, and um, it, it's tough. But, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's a small bump in the road. Um, we still got a lot ahead of us and um, a lot on our plate, and, you know, we're looking forward to um, trying to get a win this week against Cleveland going into the bye. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you guys are 2-0 and in the division – you beat Baltimore on the road, huge win. Uh, you beat Pittsburgh on the road, 
huge win. Now you get Cleveland before the bye to finish out your first round against division opponents. If you could win that football game and go three and zero in the division going into your bye week, man, that'd be a that'd be a great way to spend your bye week, wouldn't it? Most definitely, for sure. It would, I mean, it would get that bad taste of the Jets' loss out of our mouth, which yeah. is what we're trying to do. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's no question. Um, I, I bet, and I, I remember, you know, games like the Jets game when I played, you know, and, and, and it's like you try to go to sleep that night and close your eyes and your eyeballs turn into projectors and all you see is plays, you know, like, oh, if I had done this or done that. I mean, it drives yeah. you nuts. You don't get any sleep at all. It uh, People don't understand how how tough sometimes that can be. How long does it take you to process and get over, you know, a, a tough loss like that it, it, and, and a great win? I mean, are you equal in your handling the, the process of moving on to the next game? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like I grew up, well, when I went to college, uh, one of our coaches always called it the 24-hour rule. So it was like you had 24 hours to digest the win or the loss, and then you learn from it, and then you move on. Um, and so that's kind of been my mentality that I've carried with me ever since I, I kind of learned that that idea of how to get through different games and, you know, the aspects of it. So after digesting the the tape, the New York Jets tape, what, what's your biggest takeaway? What's the biggest thing you learned from that football game? You know, I think this, I mean, I, like I said earlier, we got to tackle better. Um, and then when, when stuff starts to hit the fan, you know, we yeah. can't panic. Just got to keep staying the course. Um, and obviously sometimes that's easier said than done. Um, but, you know, just, just learning from that and hopefully trying to not let those same mistakes happen again. Thing about the National Football League is you see such a big variance of offense in schematics and plays and personnel groupings and formations. The Baltimore Ravens, totally different animal. What the yeah. New York Jets did couldn't have been further North Pole, South Pole, opposite of what the Raven. Now you have Cleveland, who you know runs the ball about. Or they're number one in the National Football League in yards per right. game and in yards per rush, and they get a lot of runs. But do they do they have the same type of thing with different personnel groupings and formation looks? What what's Cleveland all about offensively? Um. I mean, we're going to be – they they like to run a lot of bigger personnel um, for their run packages. Um, you know, obviously they have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt who's out, but right. um, Nick Chubb's one of the better backs in this league, and we know that. And, um, you know, they're going to put him in sp spots to be successful on offense. So it's about us to um, be able to defend that. And, um, you know, I think we're going to have a good game plan for Sunday. Uh, they're, they're a football team that loves – to screen. <laughs> I, I think, I think they're like, yep. I think they've had over 30, I think it's 34 screen passes. And uh, you know, most of them traditional screen to the running backs, you know, they'll do the normal screen, screen. that you see. Yeah, yep. but they'll go tight end screen. They'll go wide receiver screen. I, 15 or 16 of them are tight end screens and, mm -hmm. you know, like a half a dozen to the wide receiver. So they run every screen known to men, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, their their biggest thing is get the ball in their playmakers' hands and let them make plays. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of different screen variances that we're going to have to defend. But, um, you know, I think we'll do a better job. So I know that uh, tight end position is, is a big deal to them. And they've got three pretty good tight ends, don't they? They have a tight end package that is amongst the best in the league in terms of, you know, mm -hmm. run blocking as well as receiving, don't they? Yeah, I, I believe it's uh, David Njoku, uh, Austin Hooper, and then the uh, I think it's Harrison Bryant, the yep. kid from. He came out from, in my class as well, um, so they they're they're very good. Um, they got very good tight ends, good running backs, good receivers, um, you know, and their O line is very good too. There's a reason why you know they they wouldn't be the number one rushing team in the league without that O line. Right. Yeah, I I think they're one of the three best in the NFL. They say Conklin though is out. He's going to have surgery, dislocated his elbow at the right tackle position, but they were playing without him earlier this year. So I think they, you know, they might be um, in a little bit better situation. Unfortunately, he's been hit by the injury bug big time, but that, yeah, that dislocation tough. is a tough, uh, tough injury for sure. Baker Mayfield, you know, playing injured with his, with his shoulder, that he's going to have to have uh, surgery on. Obviously the big thing is going to be though, like it is every week. I mean, first thing you want to do is try to control the running game and make them one dimensional, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, but I think that um, we know what Baker's capable of doing. 
um, regardless of whether or not he's injured or completely healthy. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to prepare that way. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, to, to be, to be three and all in the division, um, nine, potentially three and all in the division, nine games in is, I guess, I guess everybody has goals, individual goals, but one of the big team goals is to win your division. I mean, that's, that's the first thing you want to do is be able to go out and compete against your division. If you can finish first in your division, you got a you got a shot of uh, capitalizing on a, on a lot of your ambitions and desires, right? Oh yeah, for sure. That's why you know we're placing a big emphasis on this game. Obviously, to to start um, three and zero in our division would be huge and would help us move forward. So if you uh, if you had to say from a from a weapon standpoint, Chubb, what about OBJ? What about what about old Bell, Odell Beckham Jr.? There's there's a lot of noise in Cleveland about he's unhappy. His dad sending videotape out about, you know, bad throws that Baker Mayfield's made and he's running wide open and Baker Mayfield's not throwing him the football. And uh, it, it, it seems like they're in a situation up there that, uh, that if you guys jump on them early in this football game, um, it could be, it could be a good thing, but I, they may, since they, they, declared they're not going to trade OBJ. People thought they might trade him here on the trade deadline today. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. I have a feeling they might try to target him right away and get him involved with some explosives. Uh, that that guy's, uh, that guy's a unique package, isn't he? Yeah, for sure. We know what he's capable of, too. Just because, you know, last game he had, well, I don't know, whatever his stats were, um, weren't the best. It's, we still know what he's capable of. He's one of the most explosive playmakers in this league um, and one of the best receivers. So, um, you know, we're going to have our hands full with him all, all the time. When you play, and now during the season, you don't have time to do this, but like in the off season, when you review yourself, you look at your tape, is there any other linebacker or linebackers around the league where you say, let me throw on some tape of this guy. I might be able to pick something up that might help my game. He's the same sort or same style of linebacker that I am, or do you do anything like that during the course of your off season in preparation for the next year? Um, sometimes, you know, I've, I've like looked at like Bobby Wagner, um, one of the, you know, greatest linebackers of our generation that's been in the league for a long time and been doing it at a high level. Um, you know, another guy like Luke Keegley, um, you know, those, those are my, probably my top two, I would say. Mm. Luke Keegley, I have a nephew that played at uh, Boston College with Luke Keekley and Luke Keekley played his high school football here in Cincinnati. I mean, he's a oh, really? Yeah, he played at St. Xavier here in Cincinnati. He's a high school legend, and uh, that, that, that kid, he is, he has one of those linebackers that could see it before it happened, kind of thing. You know, he had such oh, yeah. unbelievable instincts and just and just super amazing. smart. So, your situation, you've got the communication device with Luana Rumo, you've got the green dot, you've got the microphone in your, uh, in your in a receiver in your helmet and lose on the microphone. Do you look at that as a big responsibility? I mean, is that something that you dreamed about being in an NFL huddle in control, in charge of the NFL huddle and communicating what's going on? You know, I don't know if I, I mean, it's definitely a big responsibility, but I don't make it any bigger than it needs to be. If that makes sense. You know, it's still, um, at the end of the day, this is my job is to relay the, what, what we're calling on defense to the rest of the guys on defense and making sure we're all on the same page. Um, and it's something I've been doing for a while, so I'm pretty comfortable in doing it. Take us through how much communication may go on between, you know, say like the safeties and the linebackers, the linebackers and the defensive linemen up front. How, how much communication could potentially go on during the course of, you know, 15, 20 seconds before the play is actually snapped. Yeah, I think it's hard to measure that in a specific stat, but, yeah. you know, it just depends on, you know, each game game plan, um, who we're playing, um, what we're trying to work, prevent defensively on what they like to run. Um, I mean, we got to – sometimes we got to set the D line up. Like, we might call a front, but we need to adjust it. Um, and then you got to adjust coverage playing based on how they line up in formation. And then if they get jet motion, it can change some things. So um, there's, there's more than what meets the eye is the best way I could measure it. Yeah, I got that. There's no question about it. And how, how tough is it uh, to communicate, you know, I guess road home, 
Does it matter there in terms of communication? Do you have to actually use hand signals and that sort of thing when when uh, the crowd's just going nuts? Uh, do you guys have like hand signals or codes or whatever that you might use? Oh yeah, sometimes we have to use hand signals, especially at home when our crowd's pumped up, um, <laughs> and that's a that's a good thing we like to use to our advantage is when when those guys are fired up. So um, it's a little different uh, when you're playing away because that's usually when the the home team is on offense, and so sure. their crowd's trying to be just a little you know, not as noisy, but it's still loud in the stadium regardless. You know, people don't take, they, they don't realize how significant that is. You know, the, when you have a rabid home crowd, it's definitely yeah. making it tough on the opposing offense, but it's also, you know, it, it makes it a little bit tough on the, on the defense as well, but you like it. it, it, it right. it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of an odd tug of war there, isn't it? It's like, you know, I hope, I hope everybody gets these signals uh, yeah. interpreted the right way, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's sometimes easier said than done, but yeah, it's yeah. a good problem to deal with. No doubt. No doubt. You're young at the linebacker position. Um, you guys uh, really, they've had a couple of really good drafts, particularly, you know, your draft, you're drafted multiple players that are making significant contributions to the, to the defensive football team. Do you guys look forward to growing together for a number of years here with this defense in Cincinnati? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, like you said, we got, I think, I want to say, uh, we got Akeem, me, Marcus, um, Joe, and Keandre. We're all from the same draft class. Um, we weren't all necessarily all drafted here, but we're all from the same draft class. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Jermaine and then Jordan before he got injured. Um, so we're, we're, we are young, which is, it's nice to be able to grow with guys that, um, are the same age as you and have as much experience as you do. So you guys can grow. So we can all grow together and learn from each other. From a coaching standpoint, what's the biggest thing that you've learned from your linebacker coach this season? Um, and what kind of say, job has he done? What kind of a job has he done for you? He's done a really good job of, I would say the biggest thing is preparation. You know, I think he's done a really good job with preparing us um, within each game plan um, of what to expect from them offensively um, and then how we're going to prevent it defensively. And, you know, that's that's something that, you know, might seem like it's it's a given, like it should happen, but sometimes it's easier said than done to relay that information. And so um, that's what I think he's, he's done a good job of. What's it like during the course of the game when maybe your initial game plan is, isn't unfolding the way that you had hoped? What's the process like making adjustments on the sideline? I mean, is it your position coach? Is it your coordinator? Is it everybody involved? What's that like when you guys are adjusting to adjustments? I mean, it's always like the team that ends up on top is maybe going to make the best adjustments to adjustments kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's involved in that process because you want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Um, now, sometimes it's like more so it might be our coach relaying that to um, – our, our defensive coordinator or our D-line coach through the headset because then there's less – it's just less time. So they can um, relay their information that way, which which helps because then we can just sit in one spot and work on – because something we need to address from a – at the linebacker level and the defense's line, line level might not really affect this, the back end as much. So it just kind of depends on, you know, each, adjust, each adjustment within each game plan. How long did it take you to – adjust to how good these athletes are in the national football league. I mean, it's, you know, it's the best of the best. It's the cream of the crop. You know, you're, you're going from a college football, um, you know, in Wyoming, it's not, not like you didn't see the kind of athletes you might see in the sec or conferences like that. And then you come to the national football league and it's like, uh, was that a shock or did you adjust to it very easily and fluidly? What was that like for you? I definitely took some time. I think I, you know, would probably say I got fully adjusted by the end of last season um, before my injury, but it just, it just takes some time too. Plus, you know, last year we didn't have anything in the spring. We had no OTAs. And um, so you kind of hit the ground running with, with fall camp last year. And so um, you're trying to get used to the scheme. You're trying to balance all that. Then you're trying to get used to the speed of the game and how and seeing everything. And um, you know, sometimes it just, just takes some time to get used to that stuff. So take us through your a normal week in terms of okay game on Sunday. What's your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Just just a real brief 
in terms of recovery, both mentally and physically, you know, what, what your week is like as you prepare for the following game, the following Sunday, if you don't have a Thursday night game or a Monday night game or whatever, but just a, a typical week from Sunday to Sunday, what's a week like for Logan Wilson? For recovery wise, you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Mondays we will have like team meeting and film review and all that stuff. And then, um, I usually get my massage on Monday for about an hour and a half. Uh, and then Monday evening, um, I do, I go to a float tank, um, nearby mm -hmm. and then Tuesdays is our day off. So Tuesday I will, um, what do I typically do Tuesday? Usually I just, I sometimes I'll, I got a Peloton here. So I'll like do like a flush ride, um, to flush out my legs. I have Norma tech boots at home. Um, you know, getting the hot and cold tubs at the facility, um, you know, things like that. And then, um, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, it's just we're at the facility basically all day. But like I said, I have all those things at home that I use depending on periodically. Sometimes I'll um, I'll cut myself. I'll have my fiance cut me, you know, if I'm if I'm feeling tight somewhere. Um, and then like Fridays after we have a half day. So Fridays I'll go um, and get do cryotherapy. Um, at a nearby it's called griffin elite over here um and then saturdays um you know with with traveling i have a pair of uh recovery tights that i wear um just to kind of prevent just keep blood flow in my muscles and prevent them from getting really tight when you're sitting on a bus in a plane for a while wow. um and then sunday's game day and you got it covered my man i mean between equipment and and the way you take care of yourself you got it covered I gotta go I back. I forgot to one thing. Chiropractic yeah. on Tuesday. That's what I do. Chiropractic <laughs> on Tuesday. That is big. Yeah. yeah. They manipulate you a little bit and get you yeah. get everything working. Yeah. You mentioned your fiance cuts you. Can you cups? Can, oh, cups you. Okay. Yeah. You said, Sorry. I'm like, wait a minute. Cups. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. No, I, thought, like, I I just misheard you. I thought, wait a second. Like, so yeah, the like cup, cupping yeah. therapy. Yes, yes. The cupping yeah. therapy, yeah. Oh, well, the little yeah. suction cups and yeah. Yep. Yeah, gotcha. you can buy those for like it's like twenty bucks at uh, on Amazon or something. So anyone could use them. Yeah, but they're handy to have. And then I got like a Hypervolt um, thing, and then I got a I got some ached away cups, which are different than regular ones, and they have like red light therapy, and they use a different like technique where it it's like a massaging technique. There's different things on that one. Huh. I don't need to get into the details of it, but. <laughs> And so your fiance is part of your recovery. That's, that's, that's good. That's good. Oh yeah. She's big. She, she's, um, what keeps my nutrition dialed in Tuesday really? is my cheat day for like nutrition where I can just kind of eat, um, whatever I want. And it usually helps like a refeed. So it's like you, I usually feel a lot better on Wednesdays than I do, uh, Thursdays after like a refeed is what we call it. But, um, you know, the rest of the week, she's whatever we're eating for leftovers is what I'll eat for the week. Wow. So she's good cook as well, huh? Very, very good. Good. Very good cook. Sounds like a keeper, Logan. Oh, she is. I mean, that's why she's my fiance. <laughs> she cooks, she cups. I mean, that's pretty good. That's, no, she's, that's pretty she's good. the best. That's awesome. She really is. Have you guys set a date yet? Wedding date? Uh, it's July 9th of next summer. Really? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you. Thank that's, you. That's, that's great. Yeah. So, we just a week in the life of, of Logan Wilson. And how, how good is it to have somebody like your fiance in your life after a game like took place this past week against the jets? I remember, you know, losing a, a tough football game and I'd come home and have a beautiful wife and, you know, just unbelievable two children. And, and, you know, it just kind of like lifts you. How, how big of a, how big of a factor is, is she in helping you bounce back from things like that? Oh, it's huge because it just, it just kind of sometimes like, yeah, football is what we do, but it's, it's only, it's a part of us. It's not necessarily like who we are, you know? So right. um, I think that just kind of puts things into perspective that like life is just in general is so much bigger than, than a loss on Sunday. And so um, being able to kind of come home to her and the, our two dogs, our two boys, um, <laughs> those are our dogs <laughs> or our kids. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it is nice. It's, it's nice to not have to be here alone. And, um, you know, I really couldn't do what I do without her. So. Are you guys from the same area? Uh, we both went to school at university of Wyoming, Okay, but she's from Colorado and I'm from Wyoming. Okay. You met in college though. Mm -hmm. That's a good story. Okay. So bye week coming up, um, 
it's almost like right in the middle of the season, 17 games, odd week. So it's, you know, either by week number eight or week eight or week nine is pretty good to have it in, yeah. in that situation. You, you have it right in the middle. How, how helpful and significant is by week? I mean, at this point in time, this many games in the season, your body starts to feel it. There's no doubt. Yeah, for sure. That's, I mean, that's why I do all those recovery things. Like I told you about right. um, to kind of help alleviate some of that. Um, and, you know, bye week will be big for recovery. I mean, you get to go up, basically have close to a week ish um, of really no physical toll on your body and being able to just let your body recover. And for it to be like right at the midpoint of our season, you know, you couldn't ask for a better bye week, truthfully. So are you and your fiance are going to, what are you going to do on bye week? You doing any traveling or are you just kind of chilling, uh, j- just rest and recover kind of thing? Yeah, we haven't decided yet, truthfully. It, it'll depend on some different factors, but we haven't decided anything set in stone. All right, very good. Well, I can tell you one thing. The Bengals are very excited that Logan Wilson is playing linebacker here in Cincinnati. So are the Bengal fans and everybody uh, associated with the football team. And you've had a, a great start to this uh, to this season, the midway point. Four interceptions for a linebacker, as early as you got those four interceptions, were you thinking – man, I may have a double-digit interception season. Were you thinking that this could get crazy? Yeah, I mean, not not necessarily. Just got to take it one game at a time. Control what you can. You're not always going to be able to make an interception. Sometimes the ball, the chips fall where they may. You know, that's the thing that uh, people that are enjoy success for a long period of time in this game have the attitude that you do. You, 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 you never – I've I've noticed this in the locker room with you. Uh, had an opportunity to try to catch up with you a few times in the locker room after the game. If you win by 24, you lose a tough football game. Logan Wilson, there's very little, you know, at least on the exterior, there's very little change in, in it seems like your mentality and your approach. And man, having that uh, that even keel aspect to you is going to take you a long way for a lot of years, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you giving us time and uh, enjoy some time with your fiance. I will. You have a good one. Thanks for having me. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know, you know, got to get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.